Rahim and in your occasion, the midterm exam will be on October 15th. Okay. Um, because that's when your midterms are scheduled, October 15th and 16th. So this will be on October 15th from again 7.45 to 9. Okay. Yes, sir. Not sure. Um, we'll discuss that. Uh, one more thing. What we're going to do is Tuesday, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. You'll have, um, I'll hand out exams, graded exams, and uh, we'll discuss exams, okay? Exam one. This will be from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., okay? Uh, try to be here at 1 p.m., and it'll only be conducted if at least five of you all are here. If less than five, we won't do it. Five people, yes. All right, so we have been discussing um, orbital reference frame. One of the first orbital reference frames we discussed was the perifocal reference frame. So if you remember the perifocal reference frame, it is your orbit and we focus on a point focus. So your perifocal reference frame is this is a P direction. This is a Q direction. One coming out is the W direction. So you're looking at P, Q, W. Okay. So what we do is we define P as the direction of penny axis. All right, and we define W. This also gives you a kind of a sense of what we need to define a reference frame. Okay. If you have two directions, 
can define a reference variable. So the two directions here are P and W. The W Q would be just completing the triad. And when when you you should be already aware by now, if you're looking at X, Y, Z as your triad, X, Y, Z in that order, X is equal to Y cross with Z. always do the hand thing. So if you have, if you start with x, this is where you start with x, x cross with y, you have z going up. If you have y cross with x, you have x going up. If you have z cross with x, you have y going up. Right. The other reference frame look, we looked at uh, in the previous class was Geocentric right possession declination. This is essentially the lat long frame. You can say latitude and longitude. Now, lati latitudes are lines which run from east to west, and longitudes are lines which run from north to south. But when you measure them, you measure longitudes from east to west, and latitudes from right. Going so north is positive, going south is negative, and going east is positive, going west is negative. So what we uh, what we said was, if you want to define lat latitude and longitude are always on the surface of Earth. Okay. Now, when you are discussing orbital mechanics, you are not really bothered about what is on the surface of Earth. You are, you, are what, you really want to learn about orbits. So think about, when you think about right accession declination frame, if this is your Earth, think about a celestial sphere. Okay? So everything has to be in the celestial sphere, right? A virtual, uh, imaginary celestial sphere, just around Earth. So that way you can measure, so if this is your vernal equinox, you know what vernal equinox is. You take vernal equinox as your reference and measure the right session. So you go right. Okay. And uh, you take the north-south direction, or you take the. Um, this is the zero degree. The vernal equinox is the zero degree. Latitude, so to say. All right. Uh, so you do that, and you take the north-south direction, and if you measure from the north-south direction, the line passing, the one going through, would be your declination. Declination positive, declination negative. Make sense? So if you have so let's say this is Earth. Okay. And how do how do two planes intersect? How do two 
line intercept at a point? How do two planes intersect? So this line is actually this vernal equinox. You see, line of intersection of elliptical plane, elliptical plane and equatorial plane. You understand the equatorial plane and elliptical plane are not the same plane. They are not. They are different, right? The angle is the angle between those two is 23.4 degrees. Correct? You learn that, right? Earth is tilted at an axis. What do you mean it is tilted at an axis? It is tilted at an axis compared to its rotation, the way it rotates. If it it was not tilted, the axis of rotation and the orbital axis would be the same. You see it? H vector and the north-south direction would be the same. But when you say it's tilted, the H vector and the north-south direction have a 23.5 degree, 23.4 degree difference. Okay. So these two planes, where these two planes meet, that actually defines, that is the um, basis for your vernal equinox. So that line is always the same, right? Your plane is not going to change. Orbital plane is not going to change. Equatorial plane is not going to change. So where these two planes um, intersect, that is the vernal equinox. And this vernal equinox, last time we did not get into what precession was. Right? We, we brought up precession, but we did not think about what, did not really um, discuss what precession was. So precession is, see this Earth's axis is actually moving away. The centrifugal force, the centrifugal and the centripetal force, what it does is it bulges the Earth. Earth is not exactly a sphere, right? It, it is oblated around its equator because it is continuously rotating and the mass is getting pushed out. Now when this, this is getting pushed out, this axis of rotation precesses, changes. Okay? So when this axis of pre pre this, uh, precession changes, the plane changes, right? Obviously the plane changes. Huh? The equatorial plane changes. The elliptical plane, ecliptic plane is not changing much. Okay, uh, it is not changing actually. So this, although in comparison to the ecliptic plane, the equatorial plane is changing, right? Ecliptic. Yeah. So you, it's not elliptical; it's just ellipse. Ecliptic is the orbital plane. You, you can call it the ecliptic plane or the orbital plane. So this ecliptic plane is changing. And when it, when it changes, the direction of um, your vernal equinox also changes. If you change the plane, the line where the intersect, intersect change, right? When, when that changes, the vernal equinox direction changes. And you have to keep updating that reference. For, for a long time, the vernal equinox was pointing in the direction of Aries. You know what Aries is? What is Aries? Huh? Aries is it's one of the sun signs, right? It is sun sign, but what is a sun sign? It's, it's all related. Aries is a sun sign. It's a constellation, actually. So the sun sign indicates when you were born. So when when you were born, if you are Aries, you are pointing to the Aries, the Earth. Earth was pointing to the Aries constellation. So that is the reason your sun sign is Aries. Okay. So the twelve constellations are actually on the ecliptic plane. There are hundreds of other constellations. But the 12 constellations we use are the ones around the equator. 
we have 12 constellations, right? 12 sun signs. So you have 12 constellations which are around the equator. Now, this uh, vernal equinox was pointing towards Aries for a long time, but it has changed because of this precession. It is now pointing, pointing towards the Pisces. You you know the um, Pisces or the Pis Pisces uh, sun sign. So it is now pointing to that constellation. Okay. The vernal equinox. Vernal equinox is the intersection of equatorial plane and ecliptic plane. That since it, since this plane changes, it processes. Earth processes. So this plane changes. One of the plane changes processes. Processes. P R it's it's a similar to process, but you replace that O with E. It processes. Okay? So, so the direction is changing. Right. So now you know what the geocentric right accession declination frame is. So how do you measure this? You have to reference latitudes and longitude, and you if you go right from the longitude, zero degree longitude, you have a right precession, right? And if you have the, from the vernal equinox, if you go up, you have the declination, positive declination, negative declination to the south. Positive right accession is to the east because it is right, right? You have to look at the, in which direction it is going. So this right hand rule, if it is going in this direction, this is positive. If it is rotating in this, what is the direction of Earth rotation? It's this, right? It's going from east to west. So this is positive. Why is this not? Because it is going in this direction. Okay. Now the, the other the other. Uh, reference frame we need to talk about is geocentric geocentric equatorial frame. Um, see, this is, you understand the Cartesian coordinate system? This is not a Cartesian coordinate system, right? See, right, the right accession, right declination frame is not a Cartesian coordinate system. What is, a, what is the coordinate system? It's a spherical coordinate system, correct? Because it's angle. You're defining the angle. You're defining the angle right accession. You're defining the declination as an angle. Now, in Cartesian coordinate system, what do you define? You define distances, rectangular coordinates, right? So this geocentric equatorial flame, frame it is so this is the um, vernal equinox. This is the x direction. This is the z direction, and this is the y direction. Okay. So what you're looking at here is this coordinate frame, geocentric equatorial frame, 
is centered at, at the center of Earth. The origin is, is at the center of Earth. The x direction of this frame is pointing to this vernal equinox or the Aries direction or vernal equinox. Okay. Did you, did any of you figure out what equinox is? What is an equinox? Huh? What is the equinox? Right. The day and night are precisely 12 hours on that day. Okay? The night time and day time. So that is the equinox. So you have autumnal equinox, you have vernal equinox. Then what is the solstice? Right. Data. Okay. All right. So this e this uh, <laughs> you need a lot of extra credit. <laughs> All right. So this x direction is pointing in this vernal equinox. Z direction is pointing to the north side, yeah, north direction, right, north pole. And Y direction is just complete the triad, right? What we said, we defined, we need always two directions. So X direction is vernal equinox. Z is not and y would just be again look at this it would be z crossed with x it's going to always stay the same it's always going to point in the direction of that area And this vernal equinox, see this x direction, is defined on a particular date, right? We told that. We mentioned that last time. Uh, it's not going to be the same all the time, correct? So it's a particular day. So that, that is when this frame is, fixed, is uh, defined, and it keeps that direction when it goes. So it, Earth is like it. If your vernal equinox is in this direction, even though Earth is rotating, that frame keeps looking here. It just keeps looking here and rotating like this. All right. Now there is a very um, we defined R as what? Um, if you remember, recall orbit equation. What was R? Not orbit equation. Recall the two body problem statement r double dot plus mu over r cube into r is equal to zero right have this. Now what we do is we define R in terms of X I plus Y J and Z IJK components. These are your IJK components, okay? IJK vectors. And XYZ are just the components of those in R. What would V be? X dot 
I, I, J, K is not going to change, right? Because they are, um, this is an inertial frame. So I, J, K are not going to change. You can say I, J, you can say X or you can just call it R, X. So that way you know it's components of R, R, Y, R, Z. So R, X dot, R, Y dot, and R, Z dot. All right. Now, what you need to understand here is what is the relationship between these two frames? The right accession and declination frame and this geocentric equatorial frame. Right, but, but relationship wise, what you need to figure out is, so we have the right accession. Right accession is an angle. We denote that by alpha and the declination, we denote that by delta. I can write R as R into U. where u r where u r is the unit vector in r direction okay so if you take the magnitude of r and the unit vector this is what i think this uh, we have come across this in your one of your problems. We can define this vector r as magnitude r into the unit vector in that r direction. So how do you get this unit vector? You just take the r vector divided by magnitude. You get your unit vector. This u r can be expressed in terms of declination and right accession. I will just give you this and we'll continue with the next class. So U R is equal to L I plus M J plus N K. Okay. And this is cosine delta cosine alpha. I plus cosine alpha plus cosine delta sine alpha. G plus sine delta. Okay. And this will be better vis visualized with the um, with a figure, with figure in the textbook. So we'll take a look at that and you'll get a very good understanding of figure 4.5 in the textbook, okay? This is page 204, okay? All right. Again, uh, just as a reminder, we will have We will have uh, our midterm on October 15th between 7.45 and 9. And Tuesday we'll discuss the uh, exam, exam one. I will hand out your graded exam and we'll discuss the solution. Actually the exam was very simple.
was it very straightforward everything was from what you had done earlier